All right, ladies and gents. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna wait a second. Oh, we can't go back to the very beginning. I apologize. I'm not sure if I'm gonna regret this or not, but this is actually live. And we are casting a 2v2 low elo team game upon popular request. And it's Amazon Tunnel. Amazon Tunnel, a bit like Black Forest, if you know the classic map, except there is one singular tunnel and opening through the middle. And I looked at their accounts and I said, you know what? I kind of I kind of have to do this. I'm obligated to do this for my fans. Because think, think about this. So a lot of people have at least like 300 to 400, maybe even 500 more ELO in team games than they do in 1v1. So let's say you're a thousand ELO in 1v1s. Typically you're at like 14 or 1500 team games. I'm sure it varies. But anyways, team game ELO generally higher than 1v1 ELO, okay? These players are 700 team game ELO. And this team over here of Picnic and uh, Mega Fooflick, these players they haven't even played ranked 1v1s at all. Um, so they have no ranked 1v1s, whereas the players over here, I forget which is which, but one person has one win and 10 losses in ranked 1v1s, and then the other player has like three wins and 17 losses. So we are looking at Loey the Legends, who are maybe scared of 1v1s. And I think team games are a little less stressful because you have someone to work with. Um, now, let me know. Give me feedback. Uh, I think everything looks pretty good. Uh, I, I know that this is a little jumbled because this person's name is, is huge. Um, but uh, we recently updated this so we can have chat on screen. And so it still has kind of my theme, but for team games. So I'm excited for it. But to get the actual uh, the actual introductions in, we, again, we've got Picnic. Picnic has forgotten houses here. Uh, Picnic is housed and is playing as the Ethiopians. Here in the red, you've got Portuguese for Mega. Not bad for Mega. A mega uh, bringing in some food. Over here in the blue, we've got Fenji, or Fenj, I guess, who's playing as the Tootens. And then in the gray, you've got Malians for De Rouge Johnson, who is just killing all the llamas. Also, Blue's scout. You can tell it's a low elo game because Blue has just clicked his scout, his allies TC, and it's just left it there. That's a classic. I, it's not something we talk about too much because we don't do a lot of team games. That is a classic right there. So, civ-wise, I guess we'll see. Uh, but I think Amazon Tunnel is actually a really good map for people who are learning the game. Because it is, in general, more relaxed. You could rush. Rushing is a possibility. But it's also very easy to wall up and just fortify. So. Now, since we are, from what I saw, a couple minutes behind live time, I'm actually going to speed up here, Okay. Uh, I don't know exactly where they're at, but it's probably going to be a long game, so I'm just going to press two times speed. Um, we'll get past the point where I hear llamas constantly. There's tons of hunt, there's tons of deer, there's just tons of resources to collect in general. I have noticed that the players continue to struggle with their houses. Um, if you haven't noticed, it shows the player's resources here, and then it shows the player's populations, both in military and with eco at the top. So, Gray is the one who's struggling right now. Uh, Gray is the one who's struggling the most. And Gray is like, give me all the boars. I'll take that boar and I'll take the next boar. I'll take all of it. Thank you. And there he is. Hmm. Can we change the color from Gray to something else? I actually can do that. Um. So, what would we do? How's that? Is that better? I think that might look a little better. Also, bear with me. I think the wood chopping is way too loud. We had uh, changed versions for this to work. I think the villager volume, combat volume, I don't know. I don't know if that's considered villager volume. It just seems a little loud for me. No, that didn't solve that. Maybe just general output? Selection? No. I'll turn the critters down as well. Okay, it's still really loud. Am I crazy or am I crazy? It's much louder than everything else. We have the time to fix it. I'll get to it eventually. We're still speeding up. And look at Red. Okay, so Red says, let's just wall this up. Red even used the scout there to help out against a tiger. Okay, 
I swear, this is killing me. I'm so sorry, by the way. I don't know how to solve this. Is it just villager volume in general? Okay, so now... Now we don't hear anything. Wait! I hear trees again. It's because there were no trees being chopped. How do I solve the trees, man? This is a low elo caster as well. I, got, I mean, I don't want villager volume to be zero. I don't know. But I imagine it's, like, not as loud for you guys. I generally have things a little louder on my end, so... I guess we'll just deal with it. There will be combat at some point, and, uh... That will be our focus when we get there. Uh, we have a tiger. Woo, 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 woo! Getting a kill. Villager dead on the wood line. Sad times. Everyone hitting the next age. I think this is a bug. Uh, I will have to pass along the capture age. I think it's a bug. They created... Long story short, I have a different download, and it changed a lot of my settings. Okay. So, so far, tigers have been the deadliest thing in the game. And if you look at the total KD, you can see it's not looking too good for Red. That's been our only kill. I had just realized that Teal still has only 10 villagers. Teal said, you know what? 10 villagers is where I'm at, but I am going to get the wood upgrade and the farm upgrade and also horse color. So Teal has gone crazy with eco upgrades, not so much with villagers. Now, there's no wall over here, but... And purple will notice that. Purple's sitting in the opening that would lead into the enemy base. Which is not bad. Oh, we, we're not seeing any signs that there's going to be aggression. So it seems to me like Picnic and Mega Fulik over here are more well-rounded as a team. But you have Blue, who seems to have more experience than Teal. And really anyone, actually, based on how I'm seeing them play this so far. Okay, Teal making a few more villagers. Very relaxed game. We get to hang out. See what these team games are like. I'm sure there'll be a crazy buildup. And wow. Whoa! Whoa, 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 buddy. Okay, Red is sending villagers forward, and so is Purple. So I don't know if they're on voice chat. I'm going to assume as much because we haven't seen any chat in the game. Because this seems like a coordinated attempt. But what's the plan here, man? Is he going to wall with everything? Okay, we have some coordination. Okay, so Blue's going to lose the scout, most likely. Very good coordination from the Picnic Mega Team. I mean, with this many villagers running forward, you would normally assume that this is for more than just some walls. And, okay, we are going to have the double gate. Meanwhile, Purple forgot to make houses. That's going to have to be dealt with. Lots of villagers not doing their jobs. Purple has now made a house here, which kind of blocks his own guy, his own teammate's wall. He's also being attacked by a tiger. Now the villager's still blocking the wall. Okay. Um. All right. And now a barracks. That was a big commitment. Red's economy isn't looking all that strong. Let's just say that. Red has very little food pinked up now after that journey. Now, this is the enemy scout. The enemy scout has made it through over here. Now, we've not seen anyone on the way to Castle Age yet, but it does look like purple's pretty close, and it looks like blue is pretty close. And blue might drop a castle. So, Red walks all the way over here, drops the gates, drops a barracks, now an archer range, and now a lumber camp. But, as much as you may be, you know, could be critical... Of sending your half your economy forward uh, at the same time map control is really important and so that's the outlook for picnic and mega food here now if you were to give these players based on what you've seen so far a 1v1 elo to my viewers what would you give them and yeah, they don't play 1v1s I honestly I mean they're definitely low elo legends as for how low uh, does, do we have the idle TC time here, actually? That's a really good indicator. Idle TC. Idle eco. Where's idle TC? Idle TC. That's very high. This is very high for everyone involved. I would say we might be looking at like 400 or 500 1v1s. With, with almost five minutes of TC idle time for everyone, yes. But it's also all very close. So kudos to the matchmaking for that, because these players seem somewhat evenly matched. 
Blue, though, does seem to be Mr. Experience, okay? Um, Blue has all the stone income. Blue's probably going to drop a castle. Blue also lost the scout in this area. So Blue might say, hmm, maybe I've got to head over there. This is his teammate scout. And that's probably auto scout, but auto scout can't really scout much more. Now, I'm calling this right now. It's going to happen, okay? I don't know if it's going to be now or like 20 minutes from now or an hour. But Auto Scout always tries to scout things it hasn't scouted. But currently, it cannot pass because the gate's there. Or the walls are there. But if something goes through the gate, the scout's going to follow through. You just watch. Okay, so here comes Teal. Teal, I think, lost a... Or maybe saw his ally lose a scout? I don't know. Another tiger is going to kill something. Rah. Woo, woo, woo. Um... But at the very least, Teal will now know that there's this gap here that has been walled up. And so what should happen, I think, is maybe Blue should drop a castle here. That would be a really good idea. Now, a little risky, too, because Purple's now making man-at-arms. So Purple's like, we got the position. Now I'm going to be aggressive through it. But Blue will be in castle age, and if Blue's in castle age, Blue could always make a knight or two and always deal with that. We'll see. Also, crazy houses here for uh, our teal player. Now we've got an archer range and a stable, and then maybe something else is going to be planned there. It's kind of in the farm space, but that's whatever. And here comes blue. Okay, crucial moment in the game. Crucial moment in the game. Will this castle complete? Because teal is not going to be much help. Now, I'm going to assume Purple's at home doing stuff. Yeah, we got a blacksmith. We got a market. Got a couple more villagers. Purple's probably like, oh, no, I need houses. But, oh, boy. Oh, they noticed it. Holy crap. These guys, they've got better awareness than I do. And, okay, so these villagers are going to die. This, this castle will not go up. This is going to be denied. And, actually, that could be the game, guys. That could possibly be the game. If Blue doesn't run back and save these villagers, that really hurts. And Blue has shown no sign of, of return here. Uh, I guess the villagers, you know, if they go home without building the castle, their master probably gets upset with them. Uh, we do have knights, though, for Blue. And they are Tootin knights, so at least you get some extra melee armor, but still. Castle denied at 60%. But Blue does the right thing. Blue says, okay, I need an upgrade or two. Let's forging. Waiting now. And I do think there's actually a chance, because knights are really good against feudal units. I think there's a chance blue can clear that and then drop the castle. But blue now has the lowest vill count. And I don't know how many knights you're going to need. I think having three knights should actually be fine here. But certainly, like, four or five would be perfect. Yeah. And plus, teal is kind of soaking up some of the attack. This is going to get cleared. Also, let's see if red opens the gate. If red tries to send units in there, the gate could open up. Uh, gates are locked now. <laughs> red locks the gate. Love it. <laughs> Red's like, nope, don't want that to happen. And blue says, well, screw you, bud. I'm going to build this castle then. And if this castle completes, what are you going to do about it? Okay, uh, purple's about to hit castle H. And obviously, all their focus is here. And I think that purple and red are going to start to panic a little bit. Also, do you remember the player who went research wheelbarrow at only 10 villagers? That player now has 38 villagers. Teal has turned it on. Teal also starting the trade in the Feudal Age. And this, this low elo Amazon tunnel game, man. This is pretty wild. I mean, I'm loving it so far. I don't know about everyone else. 700 elo... But that's team game ELO, so they're most likely below that. Going to town right now. We got some man-at-arms now for Picnic. Ethiopians don't really have the strongest man-at-arms, but they don't really have the strongest knights either. Um, but I guess at home, this barracks is researching Longsword. It is good to upgrade it. It's very tricky to know what to do against Teutons, though, because going infantry against Teutons is almost always a nightmare. Uh, Teutonic Knights shred other forms of infantry with few exceptions. So I think what might be best is if Purple and Red start to realize that they're going to need to fortify this with their own castle. 
And you could tell Red's thinking about it. I think Red wants to build it, but doesn't realize that he's so far away from Castle Age yet. Okay, we're going to see a house. Yeah, Red definitely wants to build a castle here. Okay, uh, Teal's going to make it to Castle Age as well. Adding trades, not a bad thing. All right, we have the long swords. And yeah, they're just waiting. They don't know what's in that castle. They're probably scared of the castle. And they they had the strategy of trying to clog up that choke point right at the start. And okay, now the knights come forward. I think the knights would clean the long swords if they had armor. But I think without that... I mean, blue can always run right back to the castle. Purple knows that. Purple's like, no, no, no. Okay. Three barracks on the front for red. So I think red's thinking... Red's just basically building stuff until the castle. Hold on. Okay, we got houses. We got houses for red. These villagers have seen the world, man. These villagers have seen the world. You're in castle age now. Oh, no, he's not. Sorry, excuse me. All right, now he's in Castle Age. So now would be the time to drop a castle. And where are we going to see it? Okay, that's a good castle. I like it. That's a really good castle. And then you can just mine the stone and the gold in the middle. Don't archers eat Teutonic Knights? Well, archers you need upgrades, and archers you need micro. So that's where the, the upgrades and the micro is going to be tricky. <laughs> because right now... I've seen no upgrades for purple, and I'm not sure on purple's archer micro. But yes, going for a lot of herbalist would be a really good move against Teutons. I just want to say, I'm very proud of Teal. I'm very proud of Daru's John... John Husson. I'm very proud of him. New town centers now? I mean, the team in the north has a massive economy lead. But we are going to see new town centers for the other team as well. Interesting house placement here for purple. Uh, purple really hates efficient gold mines, so it's decided to just build the house right there on the gold mine. Guys, I um, I think this game is making me fall back on some of my opinions in the past about low elo team games. This is really good. This is really really good. I'm enjoying this. Now I'm no promises I'm gonna mix it in all the time, but if we see a low elo team game that makes sense to me. I will go for it again. This is really cool, man. Now, I'm I'm saying that now, and this game might go on for six hours. And then I might regret it later, but... These guys are true low elo players. And I think the truest low elo players don't even play 1v1s. They play team games, or they don't even play anything ranked. Okay, that scout's gonna get killed. And we have another castle from blue. Now, I think this castle is a very passive castle. I think... Blue is scared of what's out here. I think could have justified building the castle further out here. Um, it's funny how you got some skirmishers in the tower. Yeah, I would have preferred the castle to be much further forward. But what's interesting is Blue actually has the resources to go Imperial Age. That, that'd be a crazy decision here. Is the wood chopping... That's got to be a bug, right? you guys still hear that, like, very loudly? I don't understand. I want to look at this one more time. Apologies. Uh, is there anything here? Filters. No. Unit trains. Fine. Uh, current player. Attack notification. Nothing with wood. Nothing with wood. Okay, whatever. I don't know how to customize it. That's, that's the main thing. Doesn't seem like there's really a bar for that. Okay. Maybe it's just all sounds are a little off. Hey, you gotta understand, I casted with the original program that didn't allow the 2v2 format and all the settings changed. So even if it's something like minuscule and I've been doing that other one for thousands of hours, it's gonna be something that uh, that sticks with me. But I probably shouldn't customize it now. I'm sure it's bearable. I'm sure it's fine. Okay, so here's the downside when it comes to the... Uh, here's the downside. Okay, the audio is bothering me more now. Hold on, no, I'm gonna fix this. This is really bothering me. It just got worse again. I don't understand. 
It's not selection volume. Because that's when I select stuff. Okay, so we, we did that one. Output volume is... It doesn't even feel like the audio matches what I'm seeing. I... I don't understand. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my original thing. I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm sorry. I'm actually gonna take my headphones off. There you go. Headphones are off. I can't hear anything anymore. And I'll put the headphones back on in like ten minutes when I need it. Let's be honest. I the only thing I need to uh, you know, uh the only thing I need to hear is the death and the destruction that is going to come. The first tech for blue in the Imperial Age is crenellations. Yeah, I I, I think. It could be duplicating audio. The first tech is crenellations. Guys, crenellations gives Teutons additional range. And also, he researched... He freaking researched herbal medicine. These are some very unique technologies. Very unique technologies. So, herbal medicine means you heal up within your castles faster. And crenellations gives you additional range. Okay, I put my headphones back on. You guys know what I'm saying though, right? I'm seeing, I'm hearing audio from things I don't see. There's clearly a bug going on here. 190 team population versus 145 population. Um, the, I wonder if maybe it's, okay, wait a second. So DE, the game sound was playing. But that's that's a bug with Capture Age then. It's not supposed to do that. I think we're good now. That was it. I just had to tab. Oh, yes. It makes sense again. It makes sense again. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, this is, makes so much more sense. Yay. Okay. Wonderful. So, Crenellations gives the castle's extra range. Herbal Medicine was researched pretty early. We have a Monk going forward now for Blue. And Blue is going to grab a Relic. We have Cavalier for Blue. But then we also have Elite Teutonic Knight. So, I'm not sure what Blue wants to do. Blue's probably saying, why not both? Teutons get free Herbal Medicine. How can it be researched? I just saw it get researched at the top left. I definitely saw it getting researched. So, I don't know if that's a Capture Age thing. Where it shows it for some reason. I love the touching castles from purple and red. Fortifying the same hill together. I don't know what the army comp's going to be. Like they, purple really wants to produce out of this forward on fire archery range. And purple might need to get more out here. And it just feels like blue and teal have better economies. And with that should be able to go for better armies. Having said that, we're now having heavy camel from Ethiopians. Or sorry, from Malians. I thought it was Ethiopians, so I'm the stupid one. And camels and knights are actually pretty good with Malians. After the Farimba upgrade, they get... And their blacksmith upgrades, they'll have plus 7 attack. And Teal is now going for a town center right there on that gold. Now, Portuguese players could go for Fatorias, and here we have it. Fatorias take up 20 population space. They do give you a trickle of all resources. I think Vatorias are better in 1v1s than in team games, though. Because in team games, you can trade. So, I'm not a big fan of that. And I'm a little concerned with what will happen to red and purple if the middle is ever lost. Because they are blocking it off, so it's very hard for them to run to the middle. Look at blue. Blue runs out there, snipes the Treb, says thank you very much. And red, that's why we don't trickle Treb, my friend. That is why we don't trickle treb. Lots of upgrades coming in. This is an AI army composition if I've ever seen it. Teal says, how can they counter me if I make literally everything? Uh, of course, it's not literally everything, but it's close. And blue creeping forward, now dropping another castle. With crenellations, obviously, it's very strong. And he's also making elite Teutonic Knights. All I'm seeing from purple and red is some pointy boys. And some arbs right now, but they are lacking upgrades. We'll see if they can maybe mix in some siege, though, to push this castle down. Because this feels like Treb City. But castle creeping. 
as someone just called it, is a really good idea. Generally, though, you want to have some military to back it up, so they're working on that. Ideally, you move forward with the castle and then you immediately show up with siege because then they have to respond to your siege and then they have to run underneath the castle to do that. But anyways, we're going to have Bombard Cannons coming out from the Portuguese player and he also has the Treb. So this is going to be something that will force some type of reaction, you'd think. But look at that castle. That castle is doing so much damage. Yeah, Bombard Towers could be really good in a choke point as well. I feel like Bombard Towers are something that's tricky for lower elo. Also, Red is about to find out that Teuton Castles, after crenellations, have more range than a Bomber Cannon. So this Bomber Cannon should get shot down by that castle. But I guess, I guess, yeah, there you go. The Bomber Cannon goes down, but the Trebuchet takes out the castle anyways. And Blue just gives up on it. Teal has over 3k gold. Blue has over 3k gold. The gold count is certainly high enough for purple and for red. But we're not really seeing the military production right now. And and in particular, red is the one who's struggling. Red is the one who made the siege, but he's struggling. And then purple... I mean, purple's got their own problems as well. No blacksmith upgrades. Sad times. Again, guys, teal and blue... They have a very poor win rate in 1v1s and ranked. One, I think Teal has one win and 10 losses. And the other players got like three wins and 17 losses. But the players they're up against have never played ranked 1v1s. So there's levels to this. And clearly, I mean, looking at the upgrade panel at the top, granted blue is behind on some stuff. But looking at that and then looking at the production and looking at the economy... One team is stronger than the other right now. But it's also Amazon Tunnel, and they've got a lot of fortifications, and you never know. That was sloppy from Blue to let his castle die like that. He had ponies parked right there. Well, if he would have run in, he only had like five of them, right? If he would have run in, I'm not too sure it would have worked out that well. But again, you know, you go forward with the castle, you want to back it up immediately in theory. Okay, Blue does have a ton of Halbs queued now. And so, with the upgrades being okay for them, they're not great, but okay. Halbs are great against Camels. Halbs are great against other, like, Pikemen, because Halbs is a stronger version of it, and good against Cavalier. What Halb is not good against is Teutonic Knight. Teutonic Knight are the kings of melee. Supplies! Why not? Why not get supplies? There's apples on it. What's it going to do? Nothing here, but maybe he'll want to make champions instead later. Um... So what you would want is range. And this purple player doesn't have any... Or, sorry, excuse me. He doesn't have many upgrades on his ranged units. It's just sad because he's Ethiopians. He's got faster firing archers. That's what you, that's what you really want to see here from Ethiopians. And if I'm red, I don't want to poke the bear here. I, I do not want to poke the bear, poke the bee's nest. No, no, no. You don't want to awaken the beasts. No, you run away. Yeah, okay. He's positioning his army. Looks like he accidentally made Militia, which is kind of funny. Or who knows, maybe it wasn't an accident. Okay, now maybe he'll move in with the cannons. In Halb vs. Camels should be very good for the Halbs. Okay, he's lured them back. Oh, the pro strats. Let's go. I don't think Teal knows about this. And now Teal gets the burp -er attack signal and looks forward. And he's like, guys, 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 where are you going? What are you doing here? Purple just hates ranged upgrades, apparently. It's now getting Blast Furnace. Where's that blacksmith at? Okay, still doesn't have any ranged upgrades behind this. And now Purple's had the same problem. Purple's units just automatically wanted to attack whatever came in close. Monk is even going for conversion here. And we now have Ironclad, which gives the, the Teuton Siege additional melee armors. But there's not... Actually, no, he's making Trebs. So they're definitely waiting to go for the push, and Blue's waiting till he has a lot of trebs. It's looking better with the military numbers now for the picnic team. It's looking much better than it was before. And the coordination for Teal and Blue isn't really there. They're not really fighting at the same time right now. But again, they do have trade. They have a lot more in the way of resources. And I think Teal and Blue are ready... As they drop this castle, they are ready to go for it. 
I guess purple is also making halbs, and so for that reason, purple is getting more infantry upgrades, which is good. But the Teutonic Knight is going to be the biggest problem of them all. As we have Elite Gilbetto coming in now. So Teal might consider some of those, ladies. But look at the push. I love it, guys. It's like these guys have heard me scream, do not trickle trap over the last however many years. If you show up in a big important moment, make sure it counts. Make sure you're going to have the tread numbers. Because it's possible you're going to lose the fight. At least make sure you take out the castle when you do. And I don't even think they're going to lose the fight here. The Teutonic Knights are simply too strong. Keep in mind, these things aren't even fully upgraded. They don't have the final armor yet. Now, the most dangerous thing there was supposed to be the archer. Right? The archers... That's the key against the Teutonic Knights. But the archers didn't have... There weren't a lot of them. And then they were also... The upgrades weren't in. And man, I, I really wish I could feel like, like Blue is feeling right now. I'm sure Blue is feeling like an absolute god. And how could you not with this many Teutonic Knights? He's had good support from his teammate, of course. You're going to start to see these castles go down. Purple and red adding more fortifications to try and hold. Red, <laughs> red queues of nine trebs. It's always funny at low elo how what makes people queue units is them dying. You know, like, they'll be real casual about it, and then suddenly they start to die. And, so, and then, then they're like, oh, God. And then they make a bunch of stuff. I'm not sure Treb defense is going to be the answer here, though. More Trebs are rolling forward. Here are the ladies with their little knives. These things are crazy. Um, again, we just didn't really see the conviction to any real gold units. Or Ethiopians and Portuguese. They just like their halbs. That was basically it. I mean, there was a few different units out there from time to time. Yeah, this isn't a trickle. <laughs> this is a freaking waterfall, man. <laughs> this is a flood. <laughs> this is a flood of trebs. Now we see showtels. Now, sadly, showtel warriors are just also not the answer here. I, can, I think it's a good unit in some situations, but Teutons destroy other forms of infantry, so... I think what could have worked really well was gunpowder or, or any form of high-powered range shooting. The Ethiopian arms we talked about. And then also the Portuguese, maybe organ guns. I think that could have been good. You go into a lot of range units like that, and what you do is you force the Teuton and Malian players to go for siege, which obviously they've got. Well, look at all these villagers, man. All these villagers for red. It wouldn't be a low elo team game if the players didn't want to give it up. We've got stables back here. Purple's like, I'm going to rush down some stables with two villagers and give ourselves a shot. We're going to make more stables here with one villager and a siege workshop. Unfortunately, everything is melting way faster than uh, they're able to build up. We have another castle here for Red, who's now making bomb a line of bombard towers. And there is a lot of gold out there for purple. I remember I talked about it, though. I said that I had concerns that if they ever lost the middle, they wouldn't have production. Because they just kind of plopped everything in there. I kind of like the idea of having production at home to take the middle. And then you can add more production later. What the? Johnson. What do you need this many monks for, man? <laughs> uh, five monasteries going up. I guess it's time to praise the Lord because they've just won the big battle. Maybe he's going to go full Sim City out here or something. But uh, five monasteries in the middle. Not what I was expecting to see. Now, where were the Bombard Towers, guys, when they had the middle? <laughs> Again, it's like the low elo outlook is how creative can I be after I start to die sometimes? Like, that would have been really good, having a lot of Bombard Towers. Bombard Towers, Bombard Cannons. You know, you can go down the list. Maybe it would have had more time to get different units out. Nah, the towers are going to go down. Lovely, lovely push here from Teal and Blue. And a, a nice last stand here from Red. Nice attempt. He is producing halves. He is building a lot of stuff. We're going to see camels now. Uh, I guess Purple doesn't know what else to spend the gold on. What's Blue's KD here? 
Mm, not bad. 182 kills and 52 deaths, and it's only going to get better. This is funny. Yeah, Teutonic Knights, genuinely unstoppable right now. Heavy Scorpion would actually be a really good addition, but again, too little, too late. You're just now researching it. I don't think he's going to have the time, which is sad. Red starting to lose houses. Red added another Fatoria. Red now adding more barracks. The pain is real. The siege could all push forward. I like how Teal made five monasteries and is only making one monk right now. Houses are getting shredded by these powerful Teutonic Knights. Yeah, it's very fitting that this is the blue player. Blue Teutonic Knights are where it's at. I think any other color is just not quite as satisfying. <laughs> and yeah, here come the Gabettos. Here come the Teutonic Knights. Red's like, no! What can I do? Vatorias will start to go down as well. TCs will go down. Red could be defeated in a couple minutes. Purple could be defeated in a couple minutes. They both could be defeated. The question is, will they be defeated or will they resign? Because this is low elo. So low that these two don't even have elo, actually. They do not have any rank in 1v1s. They've got a couple team games. More desperation. Red is red is like, I have 9,000 food. I need to get away from here. I could do something. I've got resources. I worked hard for this. Running away now. We have a castle from blue that's going up right here in the choke. You have more camels, which is, again, not the unit choice you would really want here, particularly with the Ethiopians, by the way. Um, but that's maybe something that Purple wasn't aware of. Ethiopians, very weak stable units. But, you know, they do look bigger than a guy with a cape. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it might not fully understand the counters in the game. Oh, Red just sent resources to Purple. He's like, hey, go for it. Make more camels. <laughs> Make more scorpions. Now, scorpions will be a little helpful, but I don't know if he has enough. So, guys, are both these teams on voice? I think there's a very good chance of that, that they're with their buddies on Discord or something. Because we haven't seen any chat within the game itself. Okay. Purple trying to build a castle here. That's going to be denied. Scorpion just got shot down by the Gabetto. Everything's unraveling. Everything's happening so quickly. Um, Red is close to getting defeated here and is going to drop a castle next to this TC. I, I kind of felt like when I saw them crumbling that they were not going to resign until they were defeated. That's the true low elo move, right? And Blue's not going to mind that much. Blue, I mean, neither will Teal. They're getting so many kills right now. They must be loving life. I'm trying to find the KD again. There's the KD for you at the bottom left. Elite Beto though. Very strong unit. Um, it, it's a bit interesting. They're very low HP, so they would stink against archers or siege, but against melee, they're also very strong. And blue has 112 Teutonic Knights. And he continues his trek, continues his journey through the forest. They've made it past the tunnel. I think another thing is low elo players will never say GG. Like this low... I, I don't want that to be the case, by the way. I think all of you, if you're playing, you should try and get the GGs out there. Regardless of how happy or sad you are with your performance. TC's going to go down. Red is two villagers away from being defeated after this. Not every day you get to defeat someone, I'm sure. Uh, and Red's villagers are going to make a run for it. And... Dead. Defeated. Top score, but defeated. And purple calls the GG. Let's go. Love to see it. He calls the GG. And look at this, guys. He said GG, but then he knew, oh, wait, that didn't go to my enemy. And then he did the star, and he said GG. I love that. Respect to you. Well played, guys. And I hope, like, if they end up seeing this, I hope that they can learn a couple things. The main thing was, honestly, with a map like this... Um, you got to have more economy. 
Uh, the economy was just insane for blue and for teal. They traded. Vatorias are great for 1v1s. They're not so good. They're not comparable to really trade or anything like that uh, in team games. And teal, this is a guy, guys, who was at 10 pop researching wheelbarrow. So he was so far behind everyone else. And then he just jump-started his economy after that. You could see how he was so far behind and then whoosh, just flew up. Um, I mean, he collected almost double the amount of resources that the other players. And then there's the KD. All the people care about is that KD there. Uh, Fenge gets his kills. But you know, I think about it with low elo. It's very common, I think, for players who are scared to play 1v1s to maybe play team games instead. And then there's even that next level of people who are scared to play online at all. That's where the true low elo legends are. And I can't find all those guys, obviously. But I don't know. I saw a 2v2 Amazon tunnel and said, screw it. Let's do it. <laughs> and it was, it was pretty fun. Wasn't as close as I would have wanted. I think there were some hard lessons to learn there for red and purple, of not making ranged units. Um, but, you know, if I want to give them an excuse, I do think Teutons and Malians are much better than Portuguese and Ethiopians. So they can, they can take that to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, be a bit happier, I guess, about things.